Coming up on Weather or Not, we take a look at how weather is affecting your chances of a pork dinner and weather's role in the World Cup. Also, we have a forecast from Ryan Bells and a feature on Weather Camp from Brad Gay. All of this and more, stay tuned. Weather or Not starts right now. And welcome to this week's edition of Weather or Not. I'm your host, Christy Ruel. And I'm your forecaster, Ryan Bells. Well, Ryan, the official start to summer is Saturday, the and 21st, when we see the summer solstice. What are we looking at for the start to summer? Well, it's already feeling like it out there now, and it's just going to continue out there. We're going to see temperatures remain right around 80 for the next few days. That sure sounds good. And what about storm-wise? We've been seeing a series of storms roll through here, just each dropping a little bit of rain on us. That's for sure. The next few days, beginning part of the day is going to be dry, partly cloudy, mostly cloudy skies, but then the showers and thunderstorms are going to roll in in the afternoon and evening hours. We'll look forward to the details coming up in your forecast later in the show, but for now, here's Nature in the News. Trying to stay cool during the summer is keeping some places warmer than expected. Researchers from Arizona State concluded that waste heat released by air conditioners is raising the outside temperature in Phoenix. The effect of air conditioners is partially noticeable at night when temperatures are 1 to 2.7 degrees higher than they were 40 years ago. This waste heat adds to the urban heat island effect that occurs around most cities where trees and grasses have been replaced with rooftops and pavement. These darker surfaces absorb around 80% of the sunlight. The heat generated from air conditioners trying to keep residents cool indoors adds to the heat. Before 1970, Phoenix had never seen an overnight low above 90 degrees. Between 2000 and 2009, overnight lows remained above 90 degrees on 50 occasions. Planning to have pork for dinner could cost more than you expect thanks to a growing pig disease. The porcine epidemic diarrhea virus affects the growth and health of pigs, causing high mortality rates in piglets, though it poses no risk to people pets, nor food. Initially, the virus was only a problem in Asia and Europe. The first case in America was confirmed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture in May of last year and has now spread to be present in 28 states, including Pennsylvania. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack says that the virus has killed about 10 percent of the nation's pop commercial pig population. The virus is carried easily through manure and easily tracked onto farms on a person's truck tires or boots. In an effort to keep Penn State's pig population free of the virus, a 72-hour pig-free time policy has been implemented before someone can visit university pigs. Increased biosecurity also requires outsiders to wear protective clothing when visiting pigs and keeps delivery drivers from getting out of their trucks. The disease has already caused the price of pigs to double and the price of pork to rise about 10 percent. Athletes are trying to be prepared for the weather. And for soccer players in this year's World Cup in Brazil, that means using the brazuca ball, specifically designed by Adidas for Brazil's climate. Players complain that the ball designed for the 2010 World Cup in South Africa did not behave properly in the air. For this year's World Cup, researchers in Australia have generated computer simulations of the ball's trajectory to take into account different factors such as air density and temperature. This comes after research in 2011 from Sheffield Hallam University found that goalies had less time to react to an incoming ball at higher temperatures. A goalie has 7% less time to react at 104 degrees Fahrenheit than at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures in Brazil are expected to be in the 80s for much of the tournament. Pilger, Nebraska was unlucky enough to suffer through a rare event earlier this week, twin tornadoes. Two simultaneously existing tornadoes descended from the same thunderstorm on Monday because of perfect atmospheric conditions that allowed the storm to climb tens of thousands of feet into the atmosphere. Preliminary National Weather Service reports indicate that one of the funnels was an EF4 with winds up to 200 miles per hour and the other was an EF2. 
Two people have reportedly lost their lives and many others were injured in the storms. According to Mike Smith, Senior Vice President of AccuWeather Enterprise Solutions, twin tornadoes only happen about once a decade. And while it wasn't a pair of twin tornadoes, Pennsylvania saw some severe weather of its own last week. A small EF1 tornado was reported in Bedford County last Wednesday evening, accompanied by golf ball-sized hail. And now, to take a look and see if we have the chance of more severe weather in our area, here's Ryan Bells with your forecast. Hello there, Central Pennsylvania, and yes, some scattered showers and thunderstorms will remain in our forecast going throughout the next few days and into early next week as well. Taking a look at our forecast for this weekend, starting with Friday, we're looking at precipitation down to our south, but we can't rule out scattered showers and thunderstorms in the late afternoon, early evening time frame for your Friday. Looking ahead to Saturday, though, better chance for precipitation moves into central Pennsylvania, where we'll see scattered showers and thunderstorms throughout the entire day on Saturday. Looks like a wet one. Make sure you have an umbrella handy. Jumping ahead to Sunday, wrapping up the weekend. Looks like the rain moves out. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds. Can't rule out a slight chance for a scattered shower throughout the area, but otherwise, it's going to be a pretty nice day. Better than Saturday, that is. We're going to track it here with our European model. We're going to see stopping the time clock. Late on Friday, 9 o'clock, take a look at the time clock. Precipitation off to our west, scattered showers over Ohio, heavier rains out near Chicago. But that's going to make its way into central Pennsylvania throughout the day on Saturday. By 9 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, we're already looking at some light precipitation, even some heavier precipitation down to our south and west of uh, Pittsburgh. And we're going to advance the time clock throughout Saturday. We're going to see the chance for rain, but by Sunday at noon, Precipitation well off to the coast, and Sunday looks like to be the best of the two days for the weekend. It's going to be dry for the most part. We might see a scattered shower, but a mix of sun and clouds is what we're expecting. Early next week, by Monday, we're looking dry for the most part on Monday. Can't rule out the slight chance for a scattered afternoon shower or thunderstorm. Better chance comes on Tuesday. We're going to be dry to start off the day, but by 6 o'clock Tuesday night, stopping the time clock, the chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms returns into the forecast. So your weekend forecast, Friday, 81 degrees is what we're calling for. Partly sunny, scattered showers and thunderstorms in the late afternoon, early evening time frame. Friday night, better chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Lows in the mid to upper 50s under mostly cloudy skies. For your Friday, mid 70s, showers and thunderstorms throughout the entire day. Make sure you got that umbrella handy and a coat if you're headed out. And going into Saturday night, lows right around 60. Scattered showers are possible. And going into your Sunday, wrapping up the weekend, it's going to be partly cloudy. Can't rule out the slight chance for a scattered shower. We'll be back with the forecast. Penn State Weather Camp kicked off on campus this week, bringing high school students together to learn and get a chance to step into a meteorologist's shoes. The students may hail from across the country, some as far away as the West Coast, but they all have one thing in common, a love for weather of all kinds. Well, they learn that there are other people like them who, who enjoy bad weather. That's really the number one thing, believe it or not. Now in its 14th year, Weather Camp holds two sessions, one for students going into grades 11 and 12, and another for those heading into grades 8 through 10. The students spend the week in the residence halls and get to spend their time both learning and socializing. Weather Camp aims to give aspiring meteorologists a well-rounded experience by exploring a wide variety of opportunities within the field. We, we put them through uh some academic exercises, but they also uh, learn about careers. They go to AccuWeather, they go to the National Weather Service, um, look at some research that's being done around Penn State. So we try to give them, a, and they do a little TV studio exercise as well, so we try to give them a pretty well-rounded view of, of what goes on in meteorology. The camp offers three areas, the National Weather Service, the uh, storm chasing, and the broadcasting aspect of it, so I think it's really nice. The students even got to show off their TV skills, putting together practice videos in our studio. 
Hello everybody, I'm Fred Godomsky. Welcome to Penn State Weather Camp. Now standing by with tonight's weather from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, here's Keely McManaman. Thank you very much, Fred. Like he said, I'm Keely, and let's get to today's weather. Weather Camp doesn't just help out its attendees, though. It has also turned into a great recruiting tool for the meteorology department. Actually, I think about a third of our freshmen this year were former weather campers. 20 to 35 percent of the weather campers uh, so far have ended up coming to Penn State. So I think it, as a recruiting tool, it's, it's doing its job. Many weather campers end up choosing Penn State after getting a chance to experience it firsthand, often before they have even begun their college search. I think it's awesome. The campus is huge, but I don't think it'll be too bad. There'll be like a lot of people. And I heard that the, um, this department's like small and like family oriented. So I think that'll be like really good, <laughs> like a good change from like the huge campus. And I want to be a broadcast meteorologist. So definitely come here. For all we know, you might even see Danielle on this broadcast someday. In the University Park, I am Brad Gay for Weather or Not. Ryan Bell is here back with your extended forecast. It's looking a little wet to start off the weekend, but drying it out for the end of the weekend. Our weekend recap, partly sunny conditions for Friday. 81 degrees is what we're calling for. Slight chance for afternoon scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible on Friday. And then going into your Saturday, we're going to cool it off to 75 degrees for the first day of summer, but scattered showers and thunderstorms are in the forecast throughout the day on Saturday. Make sure you have an umbrella handy or a rain jacket because it's going to be a wet one Saturday. Going into Sunday, temperatures rebound back up near 80. Partly cloudy skies can't rule out a slight chance for a scattered shower throughout central Pennsylvania. Our upper air patterns, mapping it out for you next week. Temperatures going to remain about average for the start of the week. We'll cool it down slightly going into Wednesday and Thursday, but temperatures throughout the entire week going to remain about average. Our average for this time of the year is right around 80 degrees for central Pennsylvania. Going into the end of next week, start of the weekend, temperatures start to rebound just slightly, but throughout the entire week we're going to remain right around average. Our extended forecast mapping it out for you. Scattered showers and thunderstorms in the forecast for the better part of next week. Look at this. We might finally dry it out come the end of next week and going into the weekend with partly cloudy skies on Friday. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on that as the time gets closer, but all of next week, right around average. 80 degrees is what we're expecting for the most part next week, but make sure you have the umbrella handy because it's going to be wet with scattered showers and thunderstorms in the forecast for most of next week. All right. Well, thank you for that forecast, You're Ryan. Welcome. It definitely looks like summer is going to be underway. And that's going to be the story for the next few days at least. Sounds good. Well, on a cooler note, let's turn back to our weather whiz quiz that we asked you earlier in the show. How much snow fell during the snowiest June on record in State College? Was it A, zero inches, B, a trace, C, a tenth of an inch, or D, one inch? The correct answer is B, a trace. And that fell back on June 23rd, 1902. And you know the interesting thing throughout all of Pennsylvania, the trace is the highest amount of snowfall we've received in June. That is quite okay with me. <laughs> and I have also saw in the record books that nowhere in Pennsylvania has noted any snowfall in July nor August. Wow. So hopefully... Hopefully it stays that way for the next few months. It sounds good to me. Nice There was and no warm. snow in my forecast. Right. Sounds good. <laughs> Well, on a warm and happy note, we will end today's show. Hope you join us back next week for more Weather or Not. But for now, I'm your host, Christy Ruel. And I'm your forecaster, Ryan Bells. Have a great weekend.